The majority of us take for granted that certain things dissolve easily in water, like table salt. We also know that oil and water don't mix, as the oil or fat is insoluble in water and the lighter fat molecules float to the top forming a distinct layer above the more dense water. But why is this? To explain this phenomenon, let's first take a closer look at the water molecule itself. We all know the chemical formula of water is H2O, meaning two hydrogen atoms are attached to a single oxygen atom. But this is not a linear molecule. Remember, oxygen has six valence electrons in its outer orbit, with two paired and two unpaired. The two unpaired electrons can participate in chemical bonding. To complete its outer orbit, two more electrons are necessary to achieve its noble configuration of eight orbiting electrons. Hydrogen has a single orbiting electron in its lone S-shell and needs one more to obtain its noble status of two orbiting electrons. Alternatively, Hydrogen is sometimes willing to be more metal-like and just give up its single electron completely emptying its single S shell. The water bond is sort of a hybridization of these two states. First of all, the three atoms form an angle of 104.5 degrees with the hydrogen atoms asymmetrically positioned on one side of the molecule. With this configuration, we can see that the two paired unshared electrons of oxygen predominantly occupy one pole of the molecule. Since electrons are negatively charged, this side of the water molecule is slightly negative. In addition, the hydrogens asymmetrically share their single electrons more with the electrophilic oxygen atom and less with themselves. Since hydrogen has a single positive proton surrounded by a single orbiting electron, this asymmetric electron sharing causes this side of the water molecule to be slightly positive. With a positive charge on one side and a negative charge on the other, water is known as a polar molecule. We can actually demonstrate this polar nature of water with a quick little experiment you can do yourself at home. If you take a glass or plastic rod and rub it with a cloth, you create a static positive charge on the rod as the rubbing action removes some of the superficial electrons on the rod's surface. If we have a thin stream of water from the tap, the thinner the better, and we bring the rod close to the stream, you can see the charge on the rod actually causes the stream to bend. The positive charge on the rod attracts the negative or oxygen pole of the water molecule and pulls it towards the rod. If we allow the water to splash on the rod, the surface electrons are restored by the water atoms and the attraction stops. Rubbing the rod again with the cloth recharges the rod and recreates the bending of the stream. For our discussion of lipid transport, this phenomenon is important because only polar or charged molecules dissolve in water, but nonpolar molecules will not. For instance, we know sodium chloride or table salt dissolves readily in a glass of water, especially warm water. Sodium is a metal in the first column of the periodic table, and chlorine is a nonmetal on the far right side of the periodic table. Sodium, like hydrogen, has a single valence electron in its S shell, and also like hydrogen, either wants to get another electron to complete the shell, or, like the true metal it is, give up its electron and completely empty the S shell. Chlorine, on the other hand, has seven orbiting valence electrons and desperately wants one more to complete its P shell. With sodium willing to give up its single electron, the imbalance of charges makes the sodium atom slightly positive. Similarly, with chlorine's willingness to accept an extra electron, the imbalance of charges makes this atom slightly negative and the bond between the two is referred to as ionic. In the polar environment of H2O, the oxygen or negative side of the water molecule is attracted to the positively charged sodium ion and multiple molecules can strip it away from the lattice of the salt crystal. Similarly, the hydrogen, or positive side of the polar water molecule, is attracted to the negative chlorine ion surrounding and stripping it away, effectively dissolving the solid into the aqueous environment of the water solvent. Heating the water causes the molecules to move faster, exposing more of the polar molecule to the sodium and chlorine ions, and thus increasing solubility. Notice that sodium chloride is made up of atoms from opposite ends of the periodic table. In general, atoms from the left side of the table are metals, or metal-like, and tend to donate electrons, whereas those on the right side of the table are nonmetals and prefer to accept electrons, also known as electrophilic. As such, 
Most of these types of molecules, made up of metals and nonmetals, are either ionic or polar covalent and are therefore soluble in water. Hydrochloric acid, or HCl, is polar covalent, with two atoms sharing their single electron in pure solution, but in the polar environment of water, become ionic with hydrogen donating its electron to chlorine. As such, acids and bases are soluble in water. Fats are composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen with the predominant chemical feature consisting of linear or branching carbon chains. With the adjacent carbon atoms equally sharing electrons, these molecules are considered nonpolar, non-ionic, and therefore won't dissolve in the polar environment of H2O, but will dissolve in other fats homogeneously. Since fats are less dense than water, they float to the top of the container, separating almost completely from the water itself. So there you have it, a brief synopsis of the chemistry of solubility and the polar structure of the water molecule. Post any questions you have in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.